It is 21 days uh, into the fourth month, the year 2020. A very good afternoon, wherever you are watching this uh, broadcast from. I believe you're well. You're staying safe. Thank you so much for creating time to be with us today. You're just in time for KBC Lunchtime News. Let's uh, keep you updated with what has been happening this uh, morning in Kenya and beyond the borders. Uh, from matters coronavirus and how we are progressing in flattening the curve globally to also looking at other matters, at other matters, a floods update. Remember, experts have warned of harsh weather patterns in our country. So far, counties of West Pokot, Elgeo, Marraquet, and uh, several regions are on high alert as a result of uh, the impact of uh, the heavy rains that have been pounding several regions. We'll be giving you details about uh, those, among other stories, that our news team has been working on. My name is Safin Achieng Oma, and our sign language interpreter is uh, Len. Odingo. Welcome on board. Remember, you can be part of this uh, by engaging us on social media at uh, KBC Channel One. And uh, of course, you can also stream online at uh, KBC Channel One and via our YouTube and uh, Facebook uh, platforms. Now, we begin with our top uh, stories. Uh, residents of Kimelok area along Enkare Narok River in Narok North constituency have been warned to halt their agricultural activities over flash flood fears. The warning comes a day after this is just a day uh, after the government in collaboration with county governments set up an interdepartmental team to deal with potential disasters resulting from heavy rains expected across the country over the next uh, three months governments strives to put in place mechanisms to caution as well as ensure populations living in high-risk areas move to safer grounds in efforts to avoid impending calamities. In the wake of grim weather predictions across most parts of the country with the onset of long rains, residents of Kimelok area along Enkare Narok River of Narok North constituency have been urged to take precautionary measures and halt agricultural activities with possible flash floods focused within the region. Narok North Sub-County Commissioner Mutukumwenga says heavy rains have been witnessed in the area for the last two weeks, adding that it was paramount to take necessary measures so as to cushion residents from glaring danger. Quite a number of people are farming along the river, especially downstream at Kimelok and, uh, and just the areas. And I want to warn them that they be very careful not to stay near the river because when it gets flooded, it can very easily not only carry away people, but also the street crops along the river, especially tomatoes, some uh, vegetables like cabbage and uh, other products that are being farmed along the river. Mwenga urged families affected by the rising water levels to move to higher grounds for safety. Reporting for Channel One News, I'm Jackie Wambiru. Thank you, Jackie, for that uh, report. Now we want to take you live uh, to Nyando area in Kisumu County. This is one of the areas that uh, has had uh, perennial floods affecting uh, residents uh, for several years, and a lot has been done to mitigate uh, this particular issue. Let's now uh, link up with our reporter, Simon Achola, uh, who is coming to us from that particular region, just for an update on what is happening, even as the government is warning of uh, harsh times ahead when it comes to uh, the weather conditions. Achola, what can you tell us? Well, Safin, a not so good afternoon for Nyando locals. Uh, the pictures behind me actually telling a story of uh, what has been happening since 6 a.m. in the morning. And of course, uh, the situation getting worse at around 8 a.m. in the morning. And as we speak uh, right now, locals are wading through the floods, trying to salvage whatever little they can from their homes, uh, moving to the higher grounds, which of course is along the Kisumu-Nairobi highway. And that has been the case since morning. Locals here, the despair on their face, telling a story of a community that is uh, 
at the mercy of uh, raging floods, floods uh, here in uh, Nyando constituency after River Nyando burst its banks today in the morning. And the locals here have been trying everything within their means just to ensure that they can salvage whatever little they can. And of course, are uh, hoping uh, that the county government and the national government can actually come to their rescue. Uh, if uh, you look uh, behind me, uh, I would just after this uh, tiny stall, that is the cause of uh, River Nyando. Clearly, you cannot tell the banks where the banks are and uh, uh, of course uh, the rivers flowing and uh, uh, right behind those trees is actually where what we used to call a hero market and uh, uh, activities on that market have actually been dis disrupted the entire morning and the locals of course are finding nothing nothing uh, useful to do other than trying to rescue whatever little they have uh, from uh, their stalls uh, or their place of business and of course homes uh, so that then they can actually uh, wait for things to come to normalcy before they can actually resume their business. But of course, we'll be talking to locals here who will actually give us um, a first-hand experience of exactly what happened in the morning uh, up until now. So we'll just talk to this gentleman who will come here and tell us his name before actually telling us exactly how the situation was since morning. My, my name is Harrison Utino Duel, mm -hmm. born in Kabondo, a businessman in Aero Market. Mm. Tell us the situation since morning. In fact, the situation just started uh, last evening at around uh, 7, that uh, the rain started. Mm -hmm. So come uh, 4, in, in the, 4 a.m., it just busted. And even right now, as we are speaking right now, there are uh, pu stu pupils down there who just can't reach here. And in fact, if there could be a boat, we could, uh, they could have rescued the situation by so requesting the county government at least to bring us anything to make us rescue those uh, young kids down there plus their mothers and uh, starting evening since the rain started there are some of them who have not even eaten some are just the only rescue is only this, this the road here this uh, highest uh, place the the, the, uh, the place that is at least based uh, higher that uh, they can be in yes, clearly clearly as as you put it what has been happening since morning has been a uh, rescue uh, mission and 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 the and you people have been trying to ensure that uh, those stuck in the floods are actually coming this side probably if you'd put us into perspective what are you guys using in terms of rescuing those who are stuck in the floods and if indeed the, the county government has actually brought any assistance in terms of ensuring that uh, you guys can actually rescue whoever is stuck in the floods oh uh, we need the assistance as both mm -hmm. And there are most of them who have uh, even uh, lost their beddings. Mm. Most of them have just left everything mm. in water there. Mm. That uh, some of them just came the way they woke up in the morning. Mm. They, they are just like that. Mm. Some of them have not even eaten, even right now. Mm. So far, there is no assistance from uh, whatever source mm. since the morning started. Mm. Thank you uh, very much. Let me talk to another person so that then can actually just if you don't mind remove your cup so that they don't get to see you clearly kindly tell us your name and give us a, a perspective of what is happening here okay. today. my names are willis otieno Opon. <coughs> actually i'm a resident of nyando born in nyando and raised in nyando so it's so unfortunate the current situation which we are undergoing you can see behind how people are wading through the water it's so tough one we are asking all the government agencies this is not a personal issue now, which we can direct to the county government or the national gov government, but we are also asking for all governmental agencies and all humanitarian agencies to come up with anything which they can rescue the Nyando people. Actually, it is so tough, it is so painful, quite a number of people are still held. The other side, there's no food. Uh, and most of we are asking the national government, as you know, the current situation of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we don't know how, this, how these people are going to be contained come evening, because it's, it's past noon and nothing has reached the ground. Very clearly. But, but uh, uh, the question I would ask you is that most of the people we've talked to have said that this is the very first time they are experiencing such uh, uh, scale in terms of floods, destruction yeah. of floods. Yeah. Probably if you tell us uh, uh, over the years, has the situation been this bad? Well, um, myself, I've never seen it this much. But as you know, the, we've been talking of the climate change. And that's why I say this beyond county government or national government. But it's a global issue. 
and which the national government must see such kind of menace which are now making us to suffer. Yeah, thank you uh, very much, Opong. Of course, uh, that is uh, one of uh, the leaders here uh, who, of course, is giving us a first-hand first -hand account of uh, what has been happening here in uh, Ahero. And, uh, of course, most of them just crying out uh, to the county government of, and, of course, uh, the national government wanting uh, multi-agencies that are actually involved in terms of um, disaster management to come out uh, strongly and assist uh, the locals here in uh, Nyando constituency of uh, Kisumu County. Uh, Safin, probably just to wind up uh, what uh, the locals here have been saying uh, has been the fact uh, that uh, River Nyando and uh, the tributaries that actually feed into River Nyando have not been desilted over the years. Uh, and they say this is a uh, part of uh, the reason as to why this uh, uh, river is actually flooding and uh, breaking it is banks. Uh, they are saying that um, the first or the low-hanging activities that they actually need to do first uh, to improve the situation here in Nyando, it is actually to ensure that they desilt uh, the tributaries that feed into River Nyando and River Nyando itself. So that then when there are floods or when there are water coming up uh, from uh, Nandi Hills and other places, uh, they can actually, uh, water can actually run smoothly into Lake Victoria. So basically that is what is happening. Of course, we'll be keeping a keen eye on exactly what is happening here, Safin, and uh, no doubt we'll be reporting to our listeners and viewers what will be happening here in uh, uh, Nyando constituency in our subsequent bulletin. Back to you, Safin. A good suggestion uh, there, Achola, by the residents in Nyando constituency of Kisumu County today. Uh, what they're experiencing is the uh, impact of uh, heavy rains that pounded uh, that area from yesterday. That's according to the residents uh, this particular morning. And uh, we will be uh, staying put just to follow up on that. Stay safe, Achola, as you follow up on more updates uh, for us with regards to that story now. Let's move on to other matters. It was confusion at the Blue Post the roadblock near Thika Town as a number of essential service providers were left stranded after they were barred from further movements beyond Kiambu, Muranga County border. Among those who were caught up in uh, this particular confusion uh, that occasioned a crazy snarl up were medical professionals and health workers, food dealers, distributors, wholesalers and transporters of farm produce. Have a look. In what was seen as intensified measures to block movement of people in and out of Nairobi metropolis. <laughs> Officers manning the roadblock at Blue Post, Thicker Town, were taking no chances in stopping and repulsing vehicles. <laughs> Among those who were caught up in the confusion that occasioned a crazy snarl up was a group of essential services providers. <laughs> until all of us were cleared hospital the process is taking too long several doctors have been stuck for more than three hours they are expected to be offering their services in Moranga district hospital and Maragua district hospital Kandara and the other health facilities that are within Moranga Not even patients being ferried for further assessment to hospitals were allowed to go beyond the roadblock as police went further to check vehicle stickers, identification documents, and documents provided by relevant agencies to warrant movements. <laughs> Those stranded faulting police officers for ordering them to get clearance from county police bosses beside being in possession of other requisite documents. Sasa daktari anasema huyu anapima watu hapa anasema 
nikuje na mitungia chuma niondoe maziwa kwa hiyo plastic niweke kwa chuma sasa niachilie nipeleke mahali nilikuwa napeleka Kenya Medical Practitioners Pharmacist and Dentist Union Central Region Chair Dr James Mainak Vinji took the issue with those manning the roadblocks saying they need to be more diligent in executing their mandate We have talked to the police officers that are manning the roadblock and they seem not to be even interested in what we are saying they are not even looking at the passes we have passes to use that have been signed but they are not looking at them they are not interested yet they are allowing other people to pass through for channel 1 news i am emily k buddy And on that report by Emily K. Bade, we are now going to be taking a very short break right here on KBC Lunchtime News. Don't go too far. We will be back with much more. Next on corner. I can't wait to face him in the ring again. Sounds like a bromance in the ring. Bromance. Services will not be needed on this one. But I'm the events manager of this place. Pamela, stop being childish. I borrowed some cash from money lenders. You mean loan sharks? I had a plan. What have you got against one going? It's just odd how she's always helping homeless strangers, but is indifferent. You tried scare tactics on your mother. Why? Because, because there were things in that file. Welcome back and uh, thank you so much uh, for staying uh, with us now. Let's move on with more stories. Senior government officials today toured the Malaba border point to inspect the level of preparedness at the busy border point that connects Kenya and Uganda. This visit coming at a time the country has enhanced surveillance across its borders in an effort to contain the spread of the deadly coronavirus is to have a very uh, detailed discussions with our neighbors across and see how working together on both sides uh, we can uh, make this process of sampling uh, in such a way that we do not disrupt the flow of traffic. Mambo ya curfew, quarantine, social distance, hii haikuletwa kuadhibu mtu yoyote. Hii ni kwa sababu ya maisha yetu sisi wenyewe na kila inchi iko na njia zake za kupima. Hii si kitu ya mchezo na ulimwengu mzima mmejionea. Sidharau tusipuze na ujue ukibeba unapelekea watoto wako, wazazi wako ambao pengine wako na umri mkubwa kisha kesho hao ndio wataenda kwanza. Kwa hivyo tafadhalini tufuate hayo maagizo. All right, there also talks for Parliament to audit billions of shillings donated towards the fight against the spread of COVID-19, following reports that some persons and government institutions were misappropriating the funds. Gilgil, Member of Parliament, Martha Wangari, says Parliament must play its oversight role in making sure that the funds are well utilized and used for the intended functions. Speaking in Gilgil, after attending the sub-county disaster management meeting, Wangari noted that the constituency faced a major food shortage due to the pandemic. Kazi yetu ni ku oversight vile zitatumika na tutakuwa macho. Tujue ni pesa ngapi zimewekwa hapo nimeona mpaka IBC siku hizi wana contribute. Sikujua wako na hadi budget. 
ofisi ya DPP wana contribute millions of money hiyo pesa yote ndio iende kwa kutumika kwa kupea watu chakula kupea watu masks sababu mambo ya kushikwa na polisi jua una mask unafaa kupewa mask sababu hii kitu kupata is minimum of 50 shillings watu wangapi wanapata hata 50 shillings mtu wa boda boda anakaa hapa atapata hiyo mia moja ya kulisha watoto ama kununua mask for the last three years hatujakuwa tukiandikisha wazee kwa hivyo kuna wale ambao wamepitisha 70 years lakini hawako kwa hiyo database ya inua jamii kwa hivyo hata tunapo prioritize na tunapowapanga pia hao waangaliwe kama wale ambao wako chini wapewe priority this constituency tuko na watu wengi ambao ni needy IDPs for wale ambao walitoka kuingine tuko na flower farmers au wote tunawashughulikia wale tutaweza kuguza nafikiri sio less than uh, maybe 5000 per ward nikiipea tu kiwango ambacho sijaruka sana ninaweza pea elfu tano kwenda juu sababu hata wale ambaye alikuwa anatembea anaenda anapata 300 sahihi hapati huwezi sema yeye si needy ni needy sababu hana ajira Now moving on health experts have described wearing a face mask as one of the preventive measures that can limit the spread of certain respiratory viral diseases including COVID-19 and with the government making it mandatory for everyone to put on a mask as one of the precaution against the spread of the deadly virus there has been a mad rush by Kenyans to acquire masks but how should one be worn and how do you ensure that it is safely disposed of after use masks which are also meant for healthcare workers who are in contact with patients or suspected patients at quarantine centers and this one is still also a preservative for healthcare providers now this surgical mask is in three layers for you to use it you need to make sure that this strip is facing up of course, before you don it, you have to wash your hands, perform hand hygiene properly, then you don it appropriately the way I'm doing. So you will tie it at the back with a loose knot that will enable you to remove. Then this one you adjust to fit well. You bring it below your ears then you perform the check to make sure that every part of the nose and the mouth is completely covered then you also use the nose tip to make sure that it is tightly fitting now at this juncture I want to explain one or two things that why do we use the mask at the community level? It is believed that uh, the virus is now with us and you cannot know who has the virus and who does not have it. And we know that when somebody sneezes, somebody coughs, the droplets are produced. These droplets, the heavier ones will fall near here, but the tiny, tiny droplets that we call aerosols will be suspended in the air for a while. So the purpose of uh, instructing community members to put on masks is to protect them from what could be suspended in the atmosphere in the name of aerosols. So it is very good for us to understand that so that the community members do not continue asking us why should we be forced to use it. It is not forcing, it is a preventive measure taken to make sure that if I am sick as Omondi and I have the mask, then the aerosols cannot come out from me. And if I'm closer to you, then you are not able to get aerosols from me that can affect you. So in removal, I will still go back, perform my hand hygiene. Very well. Then I will begin by loosening the lower one. Then I come and loosen the upper one. And then I remove it 
to fall into that waste management receptacle. Now at the community level you may realize we do not have hand sanitizers. So we encourage people to wash hands with flowing water after every procedure that you do. Right, there you have it, a bit of facts concerning the coronavirus, what you need to do, what you need to avoid. I keep reminding you, we do this each and every day in each and every of our bulletins. So stay for that and catch up with what you need to understand about this global pandemic. Now, moving on, a bit of what is happening across the counties. 23 people uh, were arrested in Nyeri at a guest house while engaging in a drinking spree. And they have been arraigned before a Nyeri court charged uh, with the offense of contravening COVID-19 regulations. The suspects who were charged before Nyeri Magistrate Wendy Kagendo included Ruare Ward MCA Paul Kanyari. It was a day of reckoning for 23 individuals who were arrested at Lakwisin Guest House in Nyeri where they had gathered for a drinking party when they were arraigned before Nyeri Chief Magistrate Wendy Kagendo for contravening COVID-19 regulations. The prosecution told the court that police on patrol were informed of the presence of the revelers in a pub and on raiding the facility found them merrymaking after curfew hours. Those who pleaded guilty were fined 20,000 shillings or in default served three months suspended sentence while those who denied the charges were ordered to deposit a cash bail of similar amount or in default be quarantined at Wambogo Agricultural Training Center. The prosecution had sought the accused to be put on a mandatory 14-day quarantine at Wambogo Farmers Training Center but the court opted for the fine. Meanwhile, 27 passengers suspected to have traveled from Nairobi have been put under a forced quarantine facility at Garissa Referral Hospital, bringing the number of those who have been quarantined to 31 after four others were arrested using private vehicles. Garissa County Commissioner Meru Mwangi, who witnessed the arrest, warned bus companies of colluding with unscrupulous businessmen masquerading as essential service providers. <laughs> Elsewhere, leaders drawn from Kilifi County have raised concern over alleged reckless behavior of residents in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic that is threatening the lives of people globally. Kilifi County Governor Amazon Kingi, together with Kaloleni Member of Parliament Paul Katana, say the reckless behavior could cost the lives of hundreds of people and make all the efforts put in place by the government fruitless if people will continue floating the rules. Baada ya kujua haya yote, tuna watu wengine hapa kilifi, wanaishi kama habari za coronavirus hazijafika hapa kilifi. Wanaishi kama virusi va corona ni va watu wengine lakini wao hawezi kuambukizwa virusi hivi. And residents of Isiolo town and its environs have decried what they say is harassment by police officers who are conducting crackdowns on those without face masks in public spaces. The complainants, who include street families and commercial sex workers, argued that due to change in fortunes, they can barely afford one meal a day. Hence, the additional requirement to obtain a face mask was a tall order for them. And Lurambi Member of Parliament Bishop Titus Hamala has moved to offer help to area residents during coronavirus pandemic by donating food packages, face masks, soap and sanitizers to needy households. Meanwhile, concern remains rife over the country's capacity to cater for COVID-19 cases with Kenya said to have only 518 ICU beds. Moranga Health CEC Joseph Mbai says that the number might overwhelm Kenya if COVID-19 cases increase. Pata mgonjwa yote ambao kona hiyo COVID, tuko tayari, tuko na sehemu imetengwa kwa ajili ya watu wa ugonjwa huo. Hapa Muranga Hospitali, 
na sehemu nyingine kule inaitwa Kaharo and government has been urged to consider arid and semi arid land counties in Mpesa grants speaking while receiving face masks and water tanks to fight covid-19 from Kerio Valley Development Authority Baringo deputy governor Jacob Chekonyi urged the national government to ensure Baringo is considered for grants since most locals have been affected by insecurity and now by coronavirus we need to consider also the Asal counties where we have insecurity issues, we are food insecure also, and the pandemic, the effects of the pandemic. Finally, traders at the Joska market have raised concern over a decision by the Machakos County government to close the market indefinitely. sanitization keeping safe distance business was the issue Beatrice Gatonyenge Teach Channel 1 News Beatrice for that update from across the counties now a section of senior citizens have raised concern over the mode of payment of their bi-monthly stipend by the government. They claim that a majority of them have received short messages on their phones requesting them to collect their stipends in respective banks, a move that they say was posing a risk of contracting and spreading the deadly coronavirus. Even after the government released 8.7 billion shillings to cushion the elderly and people living with disabilities against the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, the beneficiaries have faulted the government for opting to ask them to collect the money at various financial institutions instead of paying the stipends through mobile money. Nikakuta pesa nikaambiwa pesa iko kwa simu na simu yangu haina message. Sasa nikaambiwa ningoja ije ni message itaingia na ingie na pin sijaona hata sijawahi ona kitu lakini kutoka saa hiyo sasa ni, ni saa kama saa nane hivi na sijawahi kula chochote na wao hawajanipatia kwa hivyo sina tumaini lolote in Nyahururu town hundreds of elderly people queued outside the Kenya Commercial Bank pensively waiting for their turns even as the government discouraged crowding of people the elderly raising concerns, saying the arrangement poses a risk of contracting and spreading the coronavirus. It was a different script in Kiambu County. Many banks in the area have put in place effective measures to ensure that the elderly are not at risk of COVID-19. The banks have dedicated a staff member to help the elderly. We've already made arrangements for them that they are able to, take, to get shelter outside the branch. Or within the tents, we also have space to the seat so that we maintain the social distance and also we have provided the two washing points and also hard sanitizers in Lake Kipia County, the government has commenced the verification of about 40,000 households that are said to benefit from relief food packages during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Lake Kipia County Executive in charge of water, Jenga Kahiro, the list will also include residents who have been forced out of their jobs after their businesses were closed down. Governor Dirito Moreidi says the Lisha Family Initiative will target the most needy families. It is not every household. We have 140,000 households, 140,000. It is 40,000 households who are the most needy. So it is possible that you are not on the list. And the reason is that you are not amongst the neediest. All right, we want now to take you to the coastal region. Today, uh, public health officials uh, commenced uh, mass testing for COVID-19 at the Kenya Ports Authority. Remember, two, official, two staff members of this particular uh, port uh, were succumbed to COVID-19 and several others have been placed uh, under quarantine as a result of this uh, because, of, of course, uh, suspect, sus being suspected to have come into close contact with uh, the two cases that that has come. Joining us now live is uh, Junei Carissa from the coastal region. Junei, can you just paint a picture for us about how this exercise is ongoing? 
Um, thank you so much, Safin. We are currently at Gate 12 at the Kenya Ports Authority, where, of course, uh, it has been mapped out as one of the epicenters of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic here in Mombasa County, with 54 confirmed cases, as the Ministry of Health put it rightly, that Mombasa infection rate is going high per the day. Um, it, they saw the need, the Ministry of Health saw the need of uh, doing um, a rolling out a mass um, a testing exercise here in Mombasa County. The port of Mombasa um, since uh, last week only seven cases had been confirmed and only two fatalities had been reported here at the port. They are saying that it could be the epicenter of the virus here in Mombasa County. So uh, from Monday they tested 157. The KPA acting managing director Rashid Salim as well as uh, the head of general operations Captain William Ruto were among those who were first uh, to be tested among the 157 um, staff of the Kenya Ports Authority that were tested on Monday. 42 of those were able to find uh, to be given back their results um, um, and of course uh, the exercise is a week-long exercise. Yesterday we understand that over 200 people were tested and this um, uh, exercise has been stationed across uh, three different places. We understand at the Dock Workers Union offices at Get we also understand at the headquarters also this particular exercise is being conducted and of course uh, these uh, they are giving priorities to the security officers people working at the headquarters and of course the people who are handling cargoes in and out of the port so out of those um, uh, we understand 1,000 people are expected to be tested uh, in this week-long exercise out of the 1,000 to date uh, we can estimate over 400 people have already been tested uh, from Monday and Tuesday and we expect they get their results as the week go by. We understand today the exercise kicked off at 10 a.m. and it's continuing through the day. Later in the day we will be of course being able to be told by the officials how many people were tested today but we understand that they were given a priority to the officers as well as those who are handling cargo in and out of uh, the port were given a priority to this mass testing exercise. As I have mentioned earlier, last week only seven had tested confirmed, confirmed uh, positive with the COVID-19 virus. But uh, through this mass testing, we expect whether or not uh, the numbers could shoot or could rise, uh, depending on how the Dock Workers Union officials were portraying the situation. One of the things they were advocating is the safety pre uh, precaution measures that were being taken. We understand that the gate one is where everybody who is uh, walking in and out out must uh, register biometrically in and out and they were calling for the sanitization and of course for more measures to be put so that the people who are entering and leaving um, the port of Mombasa they can be uh, uh, they can be safeguarded with the COVID-19 virus but what we know is over 400 people have already been tested as now the exercise started off at 10 a.m. this morning and the exercise is supposed to take a week long where 1,000 uh, people are expected to to be tested by the uh, officials from the Mombasa Health uh, uh, Department who are currently pitching camp at the at the port of, of Mombasa. So we will be giving you, of course, a detailed update uh, at the top of the hour at 7 and 9 p.m. of uh, the, about uh, this uh, particular exercise, which of course is uh, continuing week long, and we will be telling you how many have tested positive, how many have tested negative as of today, as the exercise enters day three here at the port of Mombasa. So Safin, uh, right now we have not yet understood where, whether or not the numbers have shoot from seven of last week or uh, the numbers remain seven that were reported by the acting managing director Rashid Salim last week. So we expect more results from him today as uh, they tell us what is the program or, uh, progress of the mass uh, uh, testing exercise that is currently ongoing at the Kenya Ports Authority. So Back to you, Safina Cheng, as you keep a close eye to this particular story. Indeed, uh, we will be expecting um, an update from you, Junee, from that particular end. So far, what we know, according to our reporter, Junee Carissa, is that seven cases 
uh, were confirmed as at last week and uh, so far two people uh, have succumbed uh, to the coronavirus. These are employees uh, of the Mombasa uh, port and of course uh, there has been a mandatory mass testing that uh, commenced uh, yesterday and will go on for the whole week uh, that is targeting about a thousand people. So at the end of this exercise there could be a change in these numbers just to get a clear picture on the status of the spread of coronavirus at uh, the port of Mombasa. Now moving on a global outlook uh, nearly 2.5 million people have been infected by COVID-19 across the globe killing at least 170,000 others according to John Hopkins University. The United States account for about a quarter of all the deaths with over 42,000 deaths recorded uh, so far. The crisis is starting to abate in parts of Asia, such as Hong Kong, but continues to ramp up in the United States and other regions across the world. Emily K. Bade with the details. With the number of coronavirus cases continuing to surge across the globe, countries are grappling with how to contain the spread of the disease by putting up stringent measures. In the United States, President Donald Trump has said that he will sign an executive order to temporarily suspend all immigration to the U.S. over the coronavirus. This, even as hundreds of people gathered across the U.S. on Sunday to protest against lockdown restrictions across the country with several states planning to reopen and loosen social distancing rules. The U.S. death toll has risen by 1,433, taking the total above 42,000 with over 790,000 confirmed cases. As many countries seek an end or partial end to their lockdowns, the World Health Organization has once again given a warning that this should be a gradual process, arguing that premature relaxation may lead to a new surge of COVID-19 infections. In Europe, the number of people officially identified as infected with coronavirus in Italy has fallen for the first time since the country's outbreak of the disease. Authorities say the small but symbolic drop is a positive development. Italy's lockdown continues until 3rd May, but some businesses have reopened. France has become the latest country to record more than 20,000 deaths related to coronavirus. At all, the country's director of health has called symbolic and painful. Meanwhile, Germany has reopened small shops, car dealership and bicycle stores in a tentative of easing the coronavirus lockdown imposed nearly a month ago. The United Kingdom Parliament will resume on Tuesday with lawmakers being asked to approve a new hybrid system which will limit the number of people allowed in the House of Commons at any one time. If approved, the new measures will begin on Wednesday. In Asia, the semi-autonomous Chinese city of Hong Kong reported no new cases yesterday, raising hopes that the second wave in March could be over. But authorities are taking no chances and extended social distancing until May 7th. And China reported 11 new cases on Monday, of which four were imported. Of those, six were from the province of Heilongjiang, which is on the border with Russia. In Africa, Ghanaians welcomed the end of the lockdown with mixed emotions. While some Ghanaians were relieved to get back to work, others were left fretting that the country became the first in Africa to lift a coronavirus lockdown. Kenya's case tally as of April 20th hit 281 with the addition of 11 new cases. Kenya has East and Horn Africa's third highest tally as of today, only behind runaway leaders Djibouti and Mauritius with 846 and 328 cases respectively. There are now over 23,300 confirmed cases of coronavirus across the continent, with a number of African countries imposing a range of prevention and containment measures against the spread of the pandemic. That's the voice of Yusuf Farah on a story filed by Emily K. Bade. Now we want to take you to something that is happening right now in Nairobi. The Kenya Association of Manufacturers developed a prototype a ventilator that can be used to save lives, especially now that we have the outbreak of coronavirus. Researchers and stakeholders are doing all they can to be innovative at this particular time. Now, this e prototype uh, was being unveiled today and uh, the CS4 industrialization, Betty Miner, is currently leading an exercise of inspecting this particular prototype that has been invented by the Kenya Association of Manufacturers KMA. This is the uh, pictures that we are getting right now are coming to us from the NSSF building right here in Nairobi. Let's just uh, get a clear picture of what is happening. I'll set the rate at 15, which is normal, mm -hmm. and uh, then we can set the maximum pressure at 26. Okay. Then I have to wait for the beep. 
from the setting. Okay. Yeah. Now start the system. Five, five seconds, start. And then the system will begin initially. That was a very long 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, it's quiet, eh? Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's a safety feature. Yeah, it's a safety feature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I can make it as fast as 24 bits. You see, it's faster. Mm-hmm. Even the beep is telling you that mm-hmm. it has been accepted. Okay. So, assuming something happens, and let's start with the first. If a, if a patient knows how to call it, the mask, the mask, the mask mm-hmm. The system will alert the mask, an alarm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it will tell him on the display what is really the problem. Mm-hmm. The pipe is disconnected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they will have to come and silence the alarm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So assuming now that the patient is struggling to breathe and the lung is not compliant. Mm-hmm. That will be high pressure to the system. Mm-hmm. So we set a pressure of uh, 100%. So, but you see, when, when it beeps so much like that, the nurse has to figure out what to do next, huh? Yeah? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, he'll come here and see what's happening. Mm-hmm. High pressure. Yeah. yeah. So, when it's high pressure, then the nurse will come to silence the alarm and change, and change the setting. Okay. The arm resumes to its normal cycle, the normal percentage. Mm-hmm. So, the patient is protected. Okay. The other way, the patient is protected from overpressure and busting of the lungs. We have a physical... In case wow. it will never... Right, such a major milestone there. CS for industrialization, Betty Minor, being taken through how the prototype ventilator that has been invented by the Kenya Association of Manufacturers uh, works. And uh, you can see her there making some very important queries about that particular gadget. This is coming just days after students of Kenyatta University also undertook a similar course, inventing an oxygen ventilator that can help to boost the capacity of our, our ICUs, especially right now that we're having the outbreak of coronavirus. Now let's uh, move on and focus on how this uh, coronavirus pandemic is affecting us as the adverse effects of coronavirus continue to be felt across the country. A number of Kenyans have been driven to the edge having lost their jobs and unable to pay their monthly rent. Such is the plight of Davis Odiambo, a Boda Boda operator based in Nonkopir area of Kichengela town in Kajiado County. He has since been evicted from his house for failing to pay rent and is forced to seek shelter at a deserted kiosk. Effects of coronavirus have taken a toll on many businesses across the country, with many Kenyans losing their sources of livelihood. Others unable to pay rent have been evicted from their houses. Such is the fate of Davis Odiambo, who is a border border operator based in Nongkopir area of Kitengela town in Kajado County. Tangia corona ifike, pesa kuna. Ata apa kwa uwanja mali tuko ambayo tunategea ma customers ukibebe unaweza beba customer moja katika risari mbili ukiwa na risari mbili na kwa saa hivi hakuna kazi mwenyewe naye anahitaji pesa zake za boda boda aki ukifanikiwa 300 hiyo ingine pengine umefanikiwa hata 50 it is a situation that saw his landlord a victim from his house for failing to remit his 11,000 monthly rent, forcing him to seek shelter in a deserted kiosk. Kwa saa hii, sina malazi. Yangu zote zilikuwa zimefungiwa kwa nyumba. Mimi na sinda tu kwa kibanda na hizi majaket senye nimevaa kwa mwili. It is a way a different script in a Maroro town in Kajado East as John Olemoiko has taken a different approach, waiving rent in both his residential and business premises for two months to cushion tenants against the effects of COVID-19. So, I got a chance to get 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 a 
at least ndiwapate shida kwa sababu watu ni watu ambao wanafanya biashara ni wakaji ambao wanakaa mahali mbali ma wanakaa area hii wengine wametoka mahali pengine nje lakini wanafanya mabiashara so, sio kaona biashara hiyo imeenda chini sana biashara yetu huku ilikuwa ma kabisa au sasa mwenye ploti akatusikia kilio yetu kaja akatuambia sasa inabidi atuotolee miezi mbili kwa kulingana na ile hii mambo ya corona itaisha basi kama itaendelea kuwa mbaya tuongeza mwezi mwingine kuwa tatu na nyumba tunalipanga 1500 na sima mwenyewe analipa kando umetuambia tusilipe atatulipia jua ameona hiyo shida imekuwa ngumu hiyo maisha imekuwa ngumu sana na sio kwari channel 1 news It's now time for us uh, to explore the world of uh, business. Uh, claims uh, linking a fifth generation network to coronavirus are unfounded. These are the sentiments of ICT Principal Secretary Jerome Ocheng, who says that there is no scientific data linking the deadly virus to the deployment of fifth generation mobile technology. In an exclusive interview with our reporter Regina Manyaragitao, the PS added that Kenya has begun 5G trials in the 2.6 and 3.5 gigahertz frequency bands. Kenya is inching closer to a fifth generation mobile internet technology with seven firms already ongoing or rather undertaking trials with an aim of rolling out. This is according to the acting director general Mercy Wanjao at the Communications Authority of Kenya. The fifth generation network is promising to deliver super fast internet speed, stable downloads, streaming and connectivity once fully deployed. Despite the backing to revitalize the telecommunications on a global scale, theories have emerged linking 5G rollout to the deadly coronavirus pandemic. From a technical perspective, I say for sure these are uh, would describe them as conspiracy theories. Some theorists claim that a 5G damages the immune system, leaving the affected individuals highly exposed to the disease, while others claim that 5G mobile networks are being deployed in high-frequency bands of up to 60 gigahertz, thus causing ionization of the oxygen molecules in the air. I also realize that uh, there are so many other countries that have not even tested 5G, and yet we still have corona deaths so i mean i looked at that and i actually said i mean from a technology perspective i see no relationship whatsoever between a virus that's causing corona and the issues uh, of uh, 5g as a technology ICTPS Jerome Oscheng revealed that plans are at an advanced stage to deploy 5G network in the country, with trials already underway in the 2.6 and 3.5 gigahertz frequency bands. So we are saying, in terms of facilitating government services, then technology has played a very important role, or ICTs have played a very important role. Secondly, learning. A lot of uh, institutions are now providing uh, their learning online through the various platforms. The rollout of 5G will provide higher speeds and a better connectivity, mitigating the concerns of individuals who avoid transacting on their phones due to slow connections. In the coming weeks, the country is to attain 100% internet connectivity through the Google Loon Telcom project. 100% coverage across the whole country because as opposed to masts that we normally have on the ground here, we have balloons that are actually now providing uh, internet access uh, from the top, which means areas that were traditionally disadvantaged because of their existing infrastructure are now advantaged because it is now the reverse. Once 5G is deployed, Kenya will become the fourth African country to launch 5G networks using the Huawei technology following South Africa, Egypt and Uganda. Today... The PS, that is Jerome Ochen, has said there is no relation between the virus and the rollout of 5G and has asked Kenyans to instead take advantage of the current ICT infrastructure to work from home and support government's effort in stemming the spread of this pandemic that has so far claimed over 2 million lives globally. I'm Regina manyara Gitao reporting for Channel One Business.
time for us to explore the world of sports. Now, most coronavirus cases in Liverpool have been linked to their have been linked to their Champions League match against Atletico Madrid last month. Now, more than 52,000 fans attended the tie, with 3,000 fans travelling from Madrid. Have a look. Some coronavirus deaths in Liverpool have been blamed on the 11th of March Champions League game against Atletico Madrid at Anfield.